What's up everyone, welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about large format photography. To shoot 35mm, medium format, or large format, every photographer has to weigh out the benefits and limitations of each system. For instance, if you take out your 35mm, in a few seconds you can meter, compose, focus, and expose your shot, whereas with a large format camera it might take 4-10 to 10 minutes to do that same process and many, many other variables come into play that will determine the format to use. But at their essence, all film cameras expose film to light. Large format is well known for its shallow depth of field and its high image resolution. So I don't want to get carried away with all the specs and the details, so let's take a look at what you'll need to get started shooting large format. This is a Crown Graphic. It was a press camera that was introduced in 1947. These cameras can have an intimidating appearance, but they are really so simple. This is a film holder. It holds two sheets of film, front and back, and needs to be loaded in a dark room. This is a focusing loop and a dark cloth. You can also get away with using an old jacket. This will allow me to nail my focus. And this is a shutter release cable and a tripod, allowing me to get a sharp image with my exposure times. Now this is a light meter. This will allow me to read the light and determine the proper exposure. And lastly, this is 4x5 sheet film, Kodak's Portra 400 and Fujifilm's Provia 100. So there are a ton of options for developing your large format negatives, but I wanted something that would be easy to load, use a small volume of chemicals, and fit right into my current workflow. I went with the Bees 4x5 Developing Reel. It's a 3D printed, top loading reel that's compatible with the Patterson 3 Reel Tank. I currently use the Patterson system, and because of its easy loading design, it was the right option for me. So today is purely just a test. I know that this camera has not been shot in many years and has a high probability of light leaks, so we're going to load up a few sheets of film in the darkroom, I'm going to take some shots and make sure it's in working condition because I have to use it for an upcoming project. So the sun really snuck up on me with this photograph. I initially had just seen a sliver of light on the house and that's what really drew my attention to it. But by the time I had gotten all set up and ready to take the photograph, the sun had risen quite a bit and had created a much more contrasty scene than I originally wanted to photograph. And that's just something I'm going to have to get used to with large format, especially shooting in the early morning or evening. If you see the shot in front of you, and you don't have your camera out, it's probably too late to take the photograph because it will take a while to get set up.
I pulled out the dark slide, and when I put it back in, it went underneath the film instead of on top of the film. When it goes underneath the film and you push it in, it'll push the film out of the whole film holder. Probably can be fixed by getting better at loading this 4x5 film, number one. And number two, some people I know just pull it out and don't actually take it all the way out, but then push it in so that there's no chance that it could overlap, basically get underneath the film. I'm also super happy with this image. I'm not exactly sure what the horizontal dots are in the middle of the frame. I think that has something to do with my development or how I let the film dry. Maybe someone can chime in in the comments to let me know what that is. But I'm super happy with this and the biggest takeaway is that I don't have any light leaks so I don't have to fix this camera. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be seeing you very soon. Bye bye.